the key activities that, that I like to think that make this place really special are the Sunday school, the Hub Club Sunday school, and the Quran Madrasa as well. So there was, when this place came into being, I think a lot of people agreed that there was something about this place which, which reflected peace and sukun. Um, the Sunday school came into being about three years ago. We started with very few kids, but I had a vision for the school and it was to make it something that was excellent and different from what was being delivered elsewhere so that the kids came and had a buzz about being here, that they loved to be here and they would go home wanting to come back the next week, that they would develop a love for their deen and that they would understand that making the deen part of their lives is as important as excelling in their dunya. Um, there's no doubt that the Ghazali Children's Project has actually been transformational for our school. It's really helped the children have a deep and spiritual understanding of the key aspects of Islam. Um, the really good thing that I think has come out of seeing the kids this year was to do some recap sessions on the work that they had already covered. And it was very easy to see how much they had learnt and all of the aspects of the Ghazali Children's Project involving self-development and spiritual understanding was quite deep set in many children already. So when we were asking them to, to do activities or make posters or reflect about certain topics such as the Baraka Blue video which they had watched during the lesson, they came out with answers straight away and uh, were able to make posters and illustrations about what they thought was most important from the video without much effort at all. And I think this is what we really want our children to take with them when they grow up. So we hope that the nuggets of information that they get from the school are things that they will take with them all their lives and then pass on to their children as time goes on. So what happened when I put more water in? Let's go this below, okay? How do you think that relates to learning? Okay? The so, likeness of a person who's arrogant and proud of his actions is like somebody who's like a rock and on top of the rock is just a thin layer thin layer of soil or dust even I'm having a bit of fun I'm having lots of leisure I'm playing games Right, so I've, I've filled my jar up with all those things now, but I still need to do the other things that are important in my life. Where's my salah and my hajj and my charity and my kindness and my fasting? Where's it going to fit? Practical, visual. I think the children, we found out last year that the children really love the practical side of it. I think they love the practical activities that we, mm. that we did with them, yeah. especially the younger ones, the and even the older ones actually. The older ones love it too. They quite like Absolutely it, don't they? Absolutely love it. Uh, we, we go through the curriculum, we look at the activities, don't we? Because there's some very useful activities in yes. there. Yes, yes, and I they think. always connect back to the Quran, which is useful for us as well, isn't it? We like the practical activities the best. We do like the practical we? activities, yeah. and sometimes, if we find that they don't suit our class, then we will modify them, we'll change them, and we'll do little because drawings, we're, we're, make we're, little drawings yes. to help each other understand what we're trying to say. And we write it with the view to upgrade it for the older children. Yes. And to bring it lower to the level the of the younger children. children. Yes. And we've um, tried to have it had have a format, starting with a story, a little bit of an activity, a little bit of the workbook if necessary even if it's just referring to it for them to look at it at home, and then maybe ending with some liquor, which is a really lovely way to just end with a bit more contemplation. We look at the curriculum, yes, and we look at yeah. the chapters, yeah. and, um, and we, read, we read through the chapters, see what we what we think are the key elements. Yes. Look yes. at the curriculum. And then the we back. look at the curriculum. That's a regular slide, isn't it? Yes. We, we Always try start with the story. If, if we can't read all of it, we'll pick out the main points. And then we can use this Ghazali book, which is the workbook, and um, it, it connects, doesn't it? We also try and bring in as many personal stories as possible as well, yes, don't we? Yes, yes. We try and tell a story about ourselves. Yeah, because, because then the children yeah. think it's not something abstract, it's something that, yeah. you know, you faced, I was angry, I did this, yeah. or I did this, or I saw this. Yes, yes, or yes. Or my children did yes. this. It's, yes. It's nice to make it personal. Yes. But the things that um, they remember are the things that they've 
they've drawn or seen. Yeah, yeah, it's true experience. Yeah. When they get actual experience. Mm. I mean, there's no doubt that the kids of all ages benefit greatly from examples and stories, parables, and, and things that illustrate a key point, like the activity that you did with the candles, um, and the sand activity, um, where, where the kids had to hold some sand in their hand, and then the sand slipped through their fingers on the floor, and it was trying to illustrate the point that if you say something that hurts someone else, it's very difficult to take it back. The younger kids engaged with that really well. The moment I read the first three or four lines of the idea where we have candles representing our hearts, after that, we, I just went with it, with my own creativity, and, after, and once I started it with the kids, they were bringing their own thing into it. So, you know, wow. we had the candles, and, 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 we, and the question was, what's the purpose of the candle? It was for it to be lit. And if it's not lit, it's not fulfilling its function. Wow. And these weren't in the book, but these were where the directions you can go into. And then there was one where, and I started making like, uh, like started speaking amongst the candles themselves. Oh, wow, you know, you have this light on you. Why don't I have it? Um, so when I'm teaching uh, Life After Death, for example, an activity I'll do is um, I'll prep a student from beforehand. Um, and the student in the middle of the lesson will, well at the start actually, will come up to my desk asking can they take something and they'll collapse on the floor um, and then they'll get back up with a piece of paper saying I've come back but what if you don't? So the students actually, they, they feel this punch really because they're not expecting it and it really awakens them to respond from an emotional perspective which they otherwise might not do if they've just come from a PE lesson or a science lesson so it's about awakening sort of the spirit within the individual. Another activity I do is talking about zakat. Uh, when they come in, uh, I say, I'm in a very good mood today. You can have a blank check and the head teacher has signed it already. So how much money do you want? So they make a list of everything that they're going to spend the money on. And then we bring a bit of numeracy because then I say, figure out 2.5% off this. <laughs> Um, and then they have to figure out there's a guard and where they'd spend their money and you, you really tap into what they value in life as well, mm. what they'd be spending their money on. Mm. Say, elaborate, what's the connection between greed and the heart then, or spirit? The vices. Elaborate. There you go. I mean, the bad character comes from a bad heart and a bad spiritual state, that's why they're connected. That's why what you said is the same as what Ustad said, is that it's spirituality class. Because you almost feel like in this class, you're, in, you're more in touch with your spirit. And you also said your inner self, because you are more your spirit, which is your inner self, aren't you? More than your outward self. And you know how less your, you know the significance of your outward self? Check this out. Your outward self is so insignificant. It's always changing. Your face changes throughout life. Is your face ever the same? If you looked at yourself in 10 years time, you'd be like, whoa, that's what I look like. Right? And if you looked at yourself 10 years ago, you'd have said, that's what I look like. But your spirit, that's almost got like a different form. And she, she said that greed is linked to the heart and that essentially these classes are about the heart. And that's why his, and, and the heart is linked to, this, to the spiritual self. And that's why we connect our experience uh, uh, in, in manners and in good character, how it links to spirituality and that's why he called it the spirituality class, but it's, it's them. We know that when a person talks about their journey, it's like they're traveling again. I was mentioning a story to my, my friend yesterday and he said, it's like as if I'm traveling the story with you. you. Get a person to recall their story, they get their feels from that story. And that's what we just did with the kids. Tell me your story of the Ghazali class last year and let them go on and on and on. Let them have that moment and let them almost dialogue with themselves. As Rumi says, that when we speak, know that you only have an audience of one. And that can either be taken that God is your audience, or you are your own audience. But the problem that I faced teaching them was mainly the fiqh side of it all because as Ishaq will tell you as well fiqh for, my, for myself as well growing up was quite boring mm -hmm. learning is too technical and that was the problem we were having when we were teaching them salah or zakah 
or even but a Ghazali is spiritualized fiqh, yeah, isn't it? That's it. So that's why we turn we now started to use that approach because before it was just all technical and we could actually see kids falling asleep during the fiqh lessons. <laughs> um, so um, and so many times you would say to me, What is going on? Like look at the kids, they're falling asleep. They're falling asleep. Yeah, so recently we have started to like reassess the way we're teaching them the fiqh. It, it spiritualized it all and they made it very it made it very fun for them and easy to understand it um, but the other problems that I think that with uh, teaching that age range is that the Ghazali uh, project is wonderful for the younger children uh, and we have had to adapt it a bit for the older children the Ghazali project for me has been more of a character development course when I describe it it feels like it's a development of character um, and it's an opportunity for for youngsters to really take some of those key principles of Imam al-Ghazali uh, from his teachings and for, for us to translate those essential points that uh, every human being should think about in a way that they can not just understand but also apply to the junior level. There's definitely a, something that's, that works with the kids but when, you, when we get to teenagers, teenagers essentially are just young adults and it's like in mathematics so when I'm teaching maths I don't change the principle, principle of maths I just change the scenario it's just make it relative and so when we hear in the Ghazali book I mean the superhero example that I gave was because the kids would, would relate to that and that's why the journals are key here because let it be their own reflection let it be their own lives and that's why discussions and and debates are cool because you get to hear more from them. I mean, one of the things I've benefited in this, uh, I think the kids have benefited, and that's one of the way that the 15 year olds classes went towards where we just came in and I just asked them, how was your week? Because we'd already established what the class was about. So they almost answered that question from that perspective. And then just let them just let them speak, and then they'll they'll just be like, yeah, it was this, and you know, so on and so backbite it. Like if they say once, that's job done. The rest is just enjoy the class, and this is one of the focuses we've had is that they enjoy. It. And I think for that teenage year, really, it's it's like from Ali radiallahu anhu's advice, fourteen onwards, just accompany them. So how are you how are you going to take that Ghazali learning? and do it with kids at that age, it's almost let them come in and just be, let them just go on that journey with you and you just accompany them on that journey. Once I wasn't getting any sort of reaction from them at all. Yeah. And I said, you guys are tired of something, like you've been playing too much Fortnite. And they were like, Fortnite, sir, you play Fortnite? <laughs> you play Fortnite, sir? I said, no, I don't play it, but I know you guys do, that's why you're all, you're all tired. So that prompted them to suddenly just wake up and they were like different people after that. Once you can kind of relate to them at a certain level. So I think it's important as well to know what kind of environment they live in and then contextualizing your teaching into that environment. Yeah, I think with older t children and teenagers, one of the most important thing is not just speaking to them as if you are reading from a book, but rather become a personification of the book itself. and creating a human connection because as a teacher it's important that the biggest communication is not your voice but rather it's your body and he went on this amazing journey of self-discovery to write these books and now we're reading his books and we're going on our own journey of self-discovery so what lessons can we learn from Imam al Ghazali? number one don't be proud and boastful because what does pride in being boastful do to our shining hearts? Asma? One of the, the things that the children have really enjoyed has been drawing hearts and making hearts out of card or out of different materials and remembering the idea of trying to shine our hearts and they've written, they made little dots in the hearts to signify the dust that might be spoiling their shining hearts. We've tried to keep the focus in our Ghazali lessons on practical things as much as possible. So we've, we've loved the stories, we start every lesson with a story and try to finish every lesson with some vicar but in between we try to, to, to deliver the message through practical craft activities. We're also trying to get them to, to practice their virtues every week and to, we started the lesson for example by getting the children to introduce each other and saying one good thing about each other.
so that they understood that it's important to praise each other's virtues and be patient with each, other, with each other's faults. With the idea being that they're all teachers. Each child is a teacher, maybe to their siblings, their brothers and sisters, maybe to the children in their class. And when they do something good, other children learn from them. Okay, you find it hard to concentrate. Yeah, excellent. I find it easier for someone to not talk to me because then I get distracted. Excellent, you find it better when someone's not talking to you. Whilst I find it difficult because I'm still chatting to me. It's your day-to-day -day life. What things can distract you from doing, from praying on time, things like that? What can stop you? Fortnite. Okay, excellent. Playing Fortnite. You know, it's good because you can go home and you can discuss things with, with, with your children and that's the whole point uh, of the lessons as well is that as parents and children you're both developing and when you go home that knowledge is then reinforced you have discussions about it and you ask your children about it as well. And it's, it's really useful having the parents meetings now as well where we can discuss the books openly as a book club almost and go through each section and then um, all the ladies together, we can sit down and, and then we have the, the brother who's able to uh, instill more information in us and, um, and highlight certain topics which we would never have really understood and uh, it's been very useful. We've been getting the books out at home and uh, sitting down. Uh, we have a little section at home which we have all our Islamic books and we like to just read through together. and. Um, uh, my, my daughter has been reading through a lot more than my son because he's only just started this, this past week. Um, but she's introduced it to him and his eyes are lighting up and he's really enjoying it. Um, I think the parent class really enhanced the understanding of the book because it's, it's a lovely book, you can read it. It's in today's 21st century language which applies to children. But I think that the nice thing about the parenting class is that it focused on each chapter at a time and each chapter had a particular theme which you could then take away and relate with the chapter in the book and then do activities with the kids, um, especially the, um, the interactive comprehensive book that came with it. Um, it really, really made a huge difference to my children. And, and it just so happens my best friend, who's, who's visiting this week, I introduced the book to her yesterday, and she, she's read the first few chapters, and she loves it. And I loved it. The ideas I got from the activities book were amazing. I was just like, oh, I could do this with my class, I could do this with, like, everyone. It doesn't need to be just for Islam, it can be for everybody. It's such a lovely book, it's got such lovely values. And I feel in this 21st century, a lot of children have lost yeah. understanding of that of those values, mm -hmm. and this brings a connection mm -hmm. in a like almost in a universal way of how to be a good person. The basic answers to the most fundamental questions of life is where I came from, what am I doing here, and where is going. And this is what Imam Ghazali came to teach is that it's not just about your physical dimension, you also have a soul. And that soul also needs nourishment. And the soul is not nourished by food, by water, by physical needs, but the soul is nourished to the remembrance of Allah. And that is what I'm trying to bring the youngsters, you know, because the, the young children, the elder children, they are like a blank canvas. So you can teach them uh, anything and they will take it like. Um, like a sponge, like a water takes in the sponge. I have been teaching Islamic studies for lots of years, many years, but this is uh, this is what connects, like we're talking about, it connects um, us uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It gives us God consciousness and uh, Ghazali al Ghazali. And, look, and we look within, so look at within and Are you're looking without and okay. you're connecting those two actions. I liked the most when we were doing about the hearts and because I could learn more about shining my heart mm -hmm. and um, learn about my like what I could do and mm -hmm. how I could make myself better and help my mum and dad and I could Brilliant. make more deeds. That's really good. Each jewel is a kind deed that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. So there's being kind to animals. 
loving kids <laughs> prisoners of war and the black stone and gems like le some of our lessons were really amazing and you realize there is it, it's not me or somebody There's else there's something else involved running. so it's true in the lunch break we're all going around looking at what the kids have done and what the teachers have planned yeah, and yeah. we're always taking pictures and there's, there's a real atmosphere of it's a lively atmosphere and there's a buzz about it. And it's something that's very special. And I think it reflects the baraka that's in this project because it's, it's the sincerity with which the books are written. 100%. And it's also the sincerity with which the teachers deliver it and the way in which the children receive it. Every aspect of those, there's, there's so much baraka in it that the children just absorb it. And it's, it's like a, the whole thing is just a beautiful thing. And to see all these kids of different ages take a key message every week from the age of four until the age of 16, it's just amazing. My poem is about how Allah blessed me with a beautiful heart and how he will always protect me from harm's way and how he will always help to keep my heart shining. We've learned about, we have three periods. We have Quran, Imam al-Ghazali and Islamic studies. Mm -hmm. How is the Ghazali going? Is it all right? Yes, it's quite fun. It's fun? Yes. What? Like, tell us one fun thing. Well, we sometimes do actually, I think once we like, sort of put on a play of someone doing a nice action, I'm pretty sure. That's fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see, cried Bilal. What they are teaching us saves us. That special real learning saves us from wasting our lives and makes it possible for us to go to the heavenly garden. This post is meant, is meant to be an example of... of of the, the gardens of the of the gardens Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam done for us. Marshall. Marshall. That the real main goal of our learning is to is to get near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels will become beautiful people on both the inside and outside. When you shoot an arrow you need a target. After dinner, the children's father, Hamza, set up a round target in the backyard. He was able to see what he, he is really, truly true and went then share that all with us. Aren't we blessed to have such a wonderful teacher who is showing us the way? Like Imam Ghazali, he realised that he was a bit sh uh, showing off it mm. too much and he lost his voice mm. and that was like a miracle and and then it was he he became a mustard cleaner and told no one nothing about he was an imam mm. and he has a book of knowledge that we can learn from a man who came to see al ghazali just before he died and he related his experience with Imam al-Ghazali. He was completely inner focused on the divine and had left the world behind him. When I entered into his presence, I said, this makes me cry, you are the lost thing I have been looking for all of my life. That's what I find with Ghazali, that state of being that he reached. Mm -hmm. You are the Imam who will guide me. Our meeting was an epiphany of inward knowledge. I witnessed something from him that is ineffable. He was a man whom if you saw him, you saw a manifest spiritual state. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم